The first priority at a diving accident is to manage any emergency life support that may need to be implemented. Fortunately, that's not often. But something that's necessary at most dive accidents related to decompression illness anyhow is the administration of effective and adequate oxygen first aid. And I think it's worth just spending a few minutes talking about that because it's something that's not very well done in the field. A lot of uh, dive operators now have got oxygen equipment and some oxygen supply, but it is just not well used and often the supply isn't adequate to last as long the many hours that we like people to be on oxygen. Possibly the easiest way to deliver near 100% oxygen to a breathing diver, and they have to be breathing, is through a medical oxygen demand valve, which is what this is. It's like a diving demand valve, but it's made specifically for giving oxygen. And that's, this one is fitted with a oro nasal mask, a mask to cover both the mouth and the nose. This goes over the diver's face like this, and you can hold it to yourself nice and tight. A good seal is achieved, and the diver can now breathe in and out of the demand valve. A bit deeper. It's important that the seal around the face is effective because otherwise air gets sucked underneath and the concentration of oxygen is lower than expected. But if you've got a good seal, if you've got good functioning oxygen equipment and it is serviceable, it's not too hard to draw on, and the diver is breathing slowly and deeply enough to open the demand valve, you can deliver near 100% inspired oxygen to a breathing diver. In reality, they usually get in excess of 80%, so somewhere between 80 and 100%. Thank you, Hunji. There, so that is the simplest. Probably the most common ways of delivering oxygen, certainly in hospitals and in medical clinics, is by what's called a constant flow mask. So these attach to a, to a, a nipple on the regulator and go to the person. Now, this particular one here, here goes into the person's nostrils. It's good for general patients, but it's not good for divers because this will only give a maximum of about 35% oxygen to the breathing person. So for divers where we're trying to get to 100%, this is not effective and we like them not to be used. A similar situation occurs with this, which is called a simple. There's a lot of air supplementing the oxygen that flows up this tube from the cylinder and it drops the percentage of oxygen delivered to the person's lungs. This would give about 40% oxygen, 45, 50 at the most. So it, although these are very commonly used in general medicine, in clinics or in hospitals, they're not really good for the diver. So we prefer them not to be used unless they are the only thing available. A better alternative is this, which is called a non-rebreather mask with three one-way valves. There's one there covering holes, there's one there covering holes, there's one there covering the reservoir. Now, if properly fitted to the person and with a good seal, and an adequate flow rate coming into this mask, and the flow rate we recommend is usually 15 litres a minute to start off with, the person can receive in excess of 75% oxygen. So for the same flow rate that you're using with the simple mask without the reservoir, you're getting a lot more oxygen into the person and excluding a lot more air. So these are quite a good mask. To use them, you turn the flow rate onto 15 litres a minute, Fill the reservoir with oxygen, put it over the person's face, Thank you, Angie. on top of the ears, and 
clip the nose to tighten it up around there to get a better seal. How does that feel? Is that it? Cool. So that's sealing quite nicely on Hunji, and we can see at 15 litres a minute, it's remaining full. That's a bit of a waste of oxygen, so we can actually turn the flow rate down a bit, which I've done to 10 litres a minute. And at that, she will probably be getting a 75% oxygen delivered to her lungs. So these are very cheap. They only cost a few dollars. They're very easy to use again. And they're very effective for a diver that needs high concentration oxygen. So using the same amount of oxygen as you'd use for that and spending maybe a dollar or two more, you get a much more effective oxygen system. So that's a non-rebreather mask with three one-way valves. And Dan recommends its use for divers who cannot breathe effectively from the demand valve or if you've got separate divers. These can be good if you need to speak to the person. They can actually drink through a straw whilst they're uh, breathing oxygen. They can sleep with these masks on, which a person can't do with the demand valve because the seal will be broken. So they're a very good and cheap alternative for oxygen administration and becoming increasingly used, but not used often enough because things like this and the nasal granula are still too commonly out there in the field. Dan makes these readily available. We're happy to give them to many dive operators as part of our oxygen program to, um, to reach out to dive operators and improve oxygen administration in the field. So I hope these little pointers help you understand a little bit more about delivering oxygen to the breathing diver. And that's what those are for. All right, for an unconscious diver who's not breathing, in the Dan kits we include a pocket mask or a resuscitation mask and this has an oxygen nipple here so you can attach the oxygen tubing to it as I have. It's also got a one-way valve to prevent cross infection. So you set your flow rate on 15 litres a minute on your regulator. You put the mask on the person's face. You get a good seal you tilt the head back and blow into the person as required. So that ventilates the diver and you do the CPR. So you sequence is, you do two breaths, you do 30 compressions, you do two breaths, you do 30 compressions, um, and you continue with that until you're told to stop by a medical specialist.